What's up guys, Clugfiend here. All right, now this one's just gonna kind of be a summary about basically copper plating your prints and stuff like that. You'll be able to see kind of the problems that arise two years on from having printed stuff and then plated it. Because as we all know that the plastic inside these things, it actually either warps or changes very slightly over time. And if your plates are thin, then that can cause the, the plating to ripple and various other things, especially if you age them with patinas and stuff. This is like a nice clean untreated one. In fact, I'm just going to talk about these ones for a little bit, pick them up, show you them kind of close up or as close up as it will focus and uh, explain the problems. So this one again, well before I explain the problems, there's two methods of coating your prints before you plate them. One is, in my, well, in my opinion anyway, one is using kind of graphite and the other is using silver. So graphite, as you can see in here, it doesn't get into the nooks and crannies because you need to sand it and stuff like that. And it's pretty much impossible to sand in cavities and areas like in there and things like that. So you're pretty much doomed. Whereas silver, which I've done this one here, that will, it will go everywhere. I mean, even at the bottom. And this was completely oversized as well. I mean, the entire jar I was plating wasn't probably larger than this object anyway. So, uh, but yeah, this is a, a good, good example to show you that, as you can see here, this is um, slightly warped. I don't know if I've plated this one too soon after acetoning it, or if basically just time made the, the PLA warp and therefore the shrink and the plate now is a little bit loose and has come come off in certain areas because obviously the plastic has got smaller. But again, I've patinaed it and sanded it and buffed it and polished it and done quite a lot to it. This was, by the way, as you can see there, a little bit of red. This is traffic red color fab this was made in. And uh, I split the head there. So I printed it first upside down like that. And then I just printed the top of the head separately stuck it on and then you've got the classic I kind of I thought well I'll, I'll make a nice new fan kind of holder but and then it'll kind of maybe get cooler with the air but for some reason I can't figure out which fan is what on the um, thingiverse so I just haven't bothered I took it off it was too big or something was wrong with it and then you've got these kind of little faces they came out quite nice got another one there so you can see them and they've withstood the test of time they haven't got any kind of loose areas they're okay you've got the classic benchy uh, ship inside it's even done the inside but I think this one might have been silver because it's got inside and you obviously can't sand the inside areas this is um, an anime model that I've did and again I think I printed this one by slicing it there and then sticking it and then the bottom was printed I think from there onwards but yeah that came out great and this is how they come out by the way without any sanding after the, the plating so th this is what it looks like as you pull it out of the that blue liquid it doesn't you don't need to do anything to it here's the Ultimaker robot I was still learning how to do it back then and Kind of messing around with the voltages and stuff and couldn't quite figure out how to do it. I've pretty much got it down now and uh, this is kind of half plated, half not. Now in terms of aging them, yeah they all kind of look like this bronze type of material when they've been aged. These are my face sculpts. This is done using um, Catch123 and then ZBrush just to clean it up or Memento, I can't, I can't remember anymore. Um, just like this one I put the face in. Again this is this was done in classic old school blue Ultimaker or Ultimaker blue filament. And uh, my mate's face was put in the Buddha, which I scanned in Australia. And as for these two, 
this is a nice comparison because one of these is silver and one of them is not, one of them is graphite. Now if I look here, I think this is the silver one and this is the graphite. So again there is a slight difference in quality. I think the silver is a little bit more shiny afterwards compared to the graphite one, but they, they're pretty much just as good when you pull them out of the tank. They both look shiny like these ones here. But yeah, there you have it. So the actual look is not much different, but the cost is dramatically different. You can get a little vial that, that's that big for about eight pounds, as opposed to like an entire spray can of graphite or a pot of graphite powder or whatever uh, for about seven pounds so you know for the price of one tiny vial you can spray I, I pretty much did all of this here with I don't know one or two spray cans of graphite this one I think was not silver or graphite in terms of coating it was um, one of these weird I think it was a copper spray or something like that I haven't tried the, the nickel spray but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> as long as it's conductive, it will plate the same. And then if you leave it in for long enough, then it will get this shiny look. This is a Colossus i done. And again, I thought I'd be smart and make it ultra shiny like that one with a Dremel. But again, as you can see here, it's... Uh, can I get it closer or not? <clears throat> again, you've got these... It's all kind of wrinkling off and stuff like that, so uh, that's no good. These are my old prints, and I'm going to show you some of my new ones. Before I show you the new ones, I just thought I'd show you like hardcore patina action. This is a this is like an army of darkness based rough based on hand, and um, you can get quite nice looks with patinas. And again, this is a two year old one, and it it hasn't fallen apart on me which means the plate was thick enough to withstand, you know, the corrosion that the patina does and the test of time. All right, so if you've seen me on the Automaker forum, then you, you would probably would have seen quite a lot of my dogs that I've been doing lately. That's essentially the model, and um, this is what it looks like when it comes neat out of the plating. Again, you get, I'll just show you here, you get hyper shiny areas versus slightly more matte areas if you haven't put enough paint on or if you haven't given it enough time and again I did this with graphite which means deep inside his mouth I don't know if you can just see it it hasn't been plated in there so that kind of irritates me as a perfectionist it annoys me that I can still kind of see the seam line there and where's the other one um, I think it's across here or something like that it's so that's the that's what you get out of the plate and then again because I like aging them and stuff you get this kind of bronze-ish kind of coppery look again I went a bit hardcore on this one and wore a patch out there and then his tongue but because I did it in Dutch or Dutch color fab orange Dutch orange I think it's called um, it's quite similar to copper, so you, so you don't really notice it. But this is my Tigris one that I did a while back. And I had loads of these laying around. And uh, they're printed in one, there's no gluing. And uh, you can see it's Dutch orange there from the inside. Then I've got a friend of mine here, so I thought I'd give her a present. It will sit on your desk quite nicely. Um, this was straight after I replaced my heater, so it wasn't printing as well, so I'll probably print another one and give it to her before because I'm not 100% happy with this one. There are quite a lot of layer lines like here. This is my bulldog. You may have seen this around a lot. So this is what he looks like. All the folds and the face. <coughs> the super shiny dog, which is this one here. Hold on, let me zoom out. And you can see the layer line again on this one. I didn't spend enough time getting rid of it. This is with that, I was so happy using that Squadron Green product that I was like, wow, you can just play anything, but 
you got to watch out with filler if you're plating stuff because when it's in the liquid, the liquid gets absorbed by the filler and it starts acting funny. So either cover it with a bit of super glue just to seal it or I don't know, do something because uh, if you don't, then once you paint the filler, it might look perfect. But as soon as you put it in the liquid to, to plate, then um, obviously it, it takes a bit of time to plate and during that time, it will absorb into the the gaps and you'll, you'll, you'll see the layer lines that you initially didn't. Last but not least, we got my Hellraiser. It's one of my favorites here. So this is the Hellraiser. Again, it's a little bit matte here as opposed to hyper shiny, but super shiny on the lips, kind of less shiny in the eyes because I think all the stuff got attracted to the pins, which I was super chuffed about plating all of them. Because when you're spraying pins with silver and the pins are silver themselves, you can't exactly tell if you've coated them all and uh, every single pin is coated here, so I'm, I'm really chuffed. So this is a, a common occurrence that I seem to get. If anyone out there does a lot of plating or knows how you can avoid this, it'd be great. But at one point, it, it did look like this one here, but then because the beaker is really tiny, I guess maybe residual copper kind of floats around and it just got reabsorbed back over it. So it's kind of dirty because I had loads of graphite powder on my hands and I was touching it afterwards. I was really annoyed because I dropped it <laughs> like two seconds after taking it out going, yes, what a really lovely plate. And I smashed its ear. So you can see that there. I don't know if you can see it, but there. Well annoyed. So there you have it. <clears throat> Let me have a look. So you've got the super shiny version, the kind of weird matte version. You've got the aged version. And you've got the original version. Hope you've enjoyed the video and enjoyed kind of the possibilities of what you can do with copper plating. And um, give it a go yourself. I mean, it's just 30 pounds for five liters of the stuff, or four liters or whatever hook it up to some electricity, chuck it in, done. This is what you get. Quite cool. All right, I hope you've enjoyed the video. See you next time. Before I go, I just thought I'd like to add, because I didn't mention this, that the more you touch these copper plated prints, then the more they're gonna actually get tarnished. This, they all hyper shiny when you take them out of the solution at the beginning, they look kind of gold. Then they go to this kind of coppery stage and stay there. But the more kind of moisture in the air and sweat in your hand from touching, they kind of go black and dark. And obviously, if you're going to be wiping them constantly after doing that, you're probably going to wear the copper out. So it might be worth kind of getting some kind of clear varnish or lacquer to go over them if you want them to kind of stay kind of gold or copper or even the aged look. So basically, if you look at them and go, yep, I'm happy with it like that, get yourself a clear spray and spray it. All right, well, while I've been doing this video, I've finished this dude here. Yeah, gremlin. But my only problem with this is he's too shiny, I think. So um, I'm, I'm going to age him quite a lot and, and maybe fill the gaps, all the little lines in with black so you can kind of bring out the features like with the dogs with a nice patina or something like that. But aside from that, he came out really cool. I'm well happy with this guy. Super shiny everywhere, nice. And he was coated with silver. A little rough here, but whatever. Because there's no way I could get inside his mouth with graphite, so uh, I used silver for this one. So there you have it. Bright light. <laughs> All right, see you guys later, bye.